My superpower is being able to connect with people on a deep level. I can recall being in Sacramento, California in high school at Luther Burbank, and my sister used to refer her friends to talk to me when they had concerns. I found out that that was a superpower because a lot of people don't have tolerance to hear other people's issues. I can also recall teaching Sunday school and for six years, and I was the best Sunday school teacher in the school according to what everybody else was saying. But nevertheless, it was the songs that I created for my students, and it was the scriptures that I allowed the students to sing and the rapport that I built with them. It was just amazing chemistry and energy. Our reviews were always the best. I can also recall being at the Sacramento Urban League, and I was a little superstar there, but I can recall speaking at a graduation and there was a young lady there that felt inspired by my story. I can recall her instructors used to call me and say that she was having issues and concerns and I was the only one that she would talk to. And I would leave my job and go and talk to this young lady. I started mentoring her and it was an amazing experience because I was being a life coach and I didn't even never hear, I never even heard of a life coach. I can also recall being just in Baltimore, actually just a couple of months ago, I was talking to Miss Brenda who was referred to me by a friend and she was in experiencing some serious grief and crisis in her life. She lost her mother, her husband and her brother within three months. And I remember Miss Brenda was unwilling to get support, but after being able to keep in contact with her and checking on her, she finally received support. I helped her to get a morning routine, a kingdom morning routine, as well as a bedtime routine. I helped her to get her feelings in order so that she could understand what her pattern was. And she is no longer in crisis mode. And I'm just happy to say that she received help. Sacramento, California, 2009. I'm in ICU with my best friend and her family. The doctor was meeting with us and he said that there was nothing else that they could do. The cancer had spread all over her body and they wanted permission to pull the plug the next day. I'll never forget when Karen was diagnosed with breast cancer. She called me over to the house. She said, if you're my friend, you'll come now. I immediately went over there and she told me that she was diagnosed with breast cancer. I remember she let me touch it and it was just, it was devastating. I had never touched anything like it before. It was heavy, it was wide and it was just, it was real. I remember she told me that she was gonna make it. I helped her to organize her pills in those daily and weekly containers. She had seaweed that she was juicing and that was supposed to help the cancer to, to go away. She also had a exercise routine that she was starting and she has signed up for a marathon. And that day she charged me with basically being the faith police because she said, make sure not to have anybody around me that don't have faith. And in that moment, I realized that, you know, that was her kryptonite. And if anybody was going to have the most faith in this, it was definitely going to be me. So fast forward to the day that they pulled the plug. I remember that. I remember the scripture that says that if you have mustard seed faith that you can move a mountain. And I had mountain seed faith. And when they pulled the plug, I remember for a minute, she was still breathing on her own. And I still had faith that she was gonna make it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it just flatlined. And in that moment that she flatlined, I felt like God punked me because I have faith like until the end. I never even had that kind of faith for myself, but I had it for her. Losing her 
made me feel like I was losing myself and that I was losing my own purpose. I had to learn how to live again without her. I had to just learn myself again. I found out 10 years later in therapy that I was angry at God and that would explain why I went to church and I didn't feel anything, I was numb. I went to church out of religion and not relationship. I remember being an alcoholic and a workaholic and it was just devastating. But what I did learn from my kid's grandmother, Granny Deborah, she said, you have faith to believe that she will make it, but you never considered that God is still good if she didn't make it. And I said to myself, wow, that's powerful because I never considered that. At the end of my two-year program in inner healing and life coach school, Iyanla Van Zant, my teacher, she had asked all of the students, according to how we started the program, how did we reach our goals? And I remember listening to every lady go around the room and just express, you know, how they had reached their goals. And I can remember the closer she got to me, the more I felt like I had failed, the more I felt like I wasn't enough and I didn't work hard enough. I just didn't feel like I was, I had reached a goal. And I remember when she came to me, I said that my goal was to be transformed and I don't feel transformed. And she looked at me and she was curious, but she was optimistic at the same time. But she told me, she said, I wonder who you will become when you realize that nothing is wrong with you. And I remember her teaching us nothing is missing and nothing is broken. And in that moment, I realized that my inner child was showing up. I mean, I got an A in her class. This is a two year program. Why didn't I feel good enough? Why was I still carrying a victim mentality? But when she told me that it was something that raised up on the inside of me and I was like, wow, who will I become when I realize nothing is missing and nothing is broken? That was powerful. And I was transformed in that moment. And now it's something I can share with my clients. If I could go back and give my 21 year old self advice, first I would tell her to finish college. Second, I would tell her to follow God's purpose. And third, I would tell her to never give up. I'll never forget that when I first graduated from high school, I had went straight to college, but I dropped out the first year. I dropped out because I had a baby. I was an emancipated minor. I had my own apartment and I decided that it was more important for me to work than it was for me to go to college. So I dropped out. I would tell myself to follow God's purpose and plan for my life because what I realized as an adult is a scripture that I had never seen before. And it said that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And I realized that the further I got away from God's plan, the further I got away from my purpose. And third, I would tell myself to never give up because what I realized is that through everything that I've been through from domestic violence to being a single mom with three kids to not going back to college until I was 27 and staying in college for actually 20 years from 27 to 47, I would say that it's important for you to understand God's will for your life. The safest place in the world is in the will of God.
in three to five years, I expect to be doing what I love full time. I expect to quit my job. I expect to be helping women who are suffering in silence globally. I expect to be expanding Begin Again Academy and opening a resource center in a physical local location so that people have somewhere to go and get mental health services. I would love to have a place to be able to help people to meditate, to help people to come and get massages and just come and get information as well as teachings on the classes. I teach 40 kingdom principles in 40 days. There's so many people that are suffering in silence that have no idea what healing looks like. I also teach the seven level healing paradigm, which lets people know what healing looks like. And in a world where there's so much going on and so many people not receiving services and support, it's time to be able to help people who are suffering in silence, making it easy and accessible to people. I also have this big fantasy about being a, a super life coach, like super nanny. She goes into people's houses for like a week and helps parents to give customized routines for their families. But I would like to go into celebrities' homes and help to give them a morning routine, a bedtime routine, help them to pray, help, help them to be able to process their feelings one-on-one, -on -one. also to be able to, you know, meditate. A lot of people just need support meditating and visualizing and just being able to get in the routine of what healing looks like so that they can do it on their own after I leave. I could also see myself finishing my speaking certification program and being able to speak to people all over the world, making a living off of speaking and teaching and facilitating workshops, seminars, and conferences. <laughs>
I enjoy the people. They are very high spirited and fun to work with, easy to work with, good smiling faces, good energy, good rapport. And I can't say that I have worked with anybody that has been able to give me such a pristine experience. A lot of clarity, a lot of information as far as preparation is concerned. And I can say that this was just a joy-filled experience and I'm happy to be here and can't wait to come back.